Again, that is the legendary Herbie Hancock with one of his signature tunes, Maiden Voyage. And I, uh, as we welcome Mike D into the studio for this week's edition of Real hey, Black y'all. Radio, hey. uh, Mike was my plus one on yes. Wednesday evening. So we got a chance to, you know, step away from our uh, sibling-like bickering. Yeah, <laughs> I, I said I was going to be nice to you today. So with no guests and... <laughs> I got to be extra nice to Steph because <laughs> she treated me to uh, Herbie Hancock. Well, I mean, a- we haven't had a chance to hang out that was not work related in a minute. So, True. you yeah, know, it's so, it's, time, it's, right. so we were overdue for a chance to hang out with some good music. Right, But and- I can't I can't come after after such a great, <laughs> exciting evening and oh and bonding and he's gotta all be that. nice to me today I y'all be, i can't be like <laughs> nah <I'm... laughs> and instead of being arbitrary and screwed just like he can be sometimes but shout out to those of you who are checking us out or will be momentarily checking us out on facebook live the stream is up and running it was it was a fun time but all right well if if, if you hang with stuff you you have to have exquisite tastes <laughs> So that that's a reference. No, no, is no. that a reference to our to our a pre-show uh, fine dining and, okay, and right. drinking? So, so let's let's pretend Chuck <laughs> Willow was here, right? Okay. So so when I first walk in, right, I, like I couldn't find. She's oh, there's a champagne bar at the <laughs> at the place, and I like to hang there before I go to to the shows at the Kimmel. You know, it's like okay, all right. So I'll I'll, I'll, I'll spring for that. Fine. So I go to I go in the wrong way. I go past door C, and there's like a bar like I'm, uh-huh. thinking, I'm thinking you're gonna be at the bar like right across ah okay right i didn't know there's a whole <laughs> restaurant whole french restaurant yes attached to the kimmel center so i walk up to the guy the bartender i say oh, excuse me um where's volver he's like oh oh uh, a, vo- a volver he said oh you mean volver uh, yeah, it's around yeah. the corner you have to go through these doors and make a left and it's like so right away i'm, I'm schooled it's not volver it's volver right and then i i, I see steph and she's you're like your fifth or sixth drink what no I- it's stop it <laughs> stop it i was one glass of vino verde in that's it ladies and gentlemen don't let him portray me like i'm a a, a, a foolish lush i but i did say to my I, in my defense i did say when we talked about what time we were going to meet up and what we were going to do i was like i like to go to volver before shows and Mm -hmm. i know it's a little high post that's me i was like if you want to meet someplace else we can do that and mike said no Uh, okay no problem well it's free herbie hancock i'm I'm down for whatever so it's just i just in my defense i warned him ahead of time that i was going to be at the bar That it was a place I like to go, and I know it's a little shishi foo foo. That's not necessarily Mike's thing. I'm, I'm just look. You know, it is what it is. It's, I, we, in, it was fun, but you know, the pr- a little overpriced for that little half a chicken breast. Oh, what? But it's we French said film. ahead. French film. No, I, I need, I need a but bucket. It's a, for it's that, a, for that it's price, a, it's I need a Jose least, Andres to... restaurant. So people, you know this going in, that. It's it's just you upper. Could, you you know. can feed a family of eight. Here you go. And yeah, with crown chicken, which That's we fine. don't do. Right. It's not good I'm, for you. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Like Kimmel put a crown <laughs> near you, and maybe you'll do better. No. Huh? They do just fine with the high end dining that they have, and we weren't in the dining room. Let let us also we were at posted up at the bar, and so it is also worth. I, noting. I was provided options. Yeah, I mean, I'm not. Look, I'm not. I'm not one to complain. If I'm I'm hanging out, you know, I I know what the rules are. That's that's cool. I'm just. <laughs> You know, afterwards, Rick and I, Rick Williams, we were looking for other places to eat because it just wasn't, it wasn't sufficient. You ran into Rick Williams as we were leaving? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, he's, he's on my Instagram too, yeah. Oh, okay. He's, and he's the food <laughs> critic, but he'll, he'll tell you where to go cheap. Okay. <laughs> like if you look at uh, Money Rick on Instagram, he, he reviews all the latest fast food delicacies. Uh, oh, okay. So, so we had a good conversation. Fast food delicacies, yeah. Yeah, yeah that, that, stop. Kayla, don't, don't, don't. 
just let it go. You let it ride when but the he show, does things like that. The music. But the show was incredible. So for all of my culture vultures that are in the listening audience, you know, we talk about film and we'll get to film. But mm-hmm. just for the sake of saying, A, I tell you all all the time, when legends come to our city, you should not let the opportunity pass to see them. Mm. And I had, uh, as you all know, for those of you who have checked out, uh, either if you heard it in real time or you've checked out the podcast, of my conversation with Herbie, we had a really uh, kind of involved conversation about the multi-generational nature of what he's doing in his life right now. Okay. Teaching master classes, uh, a poet in residence uh, with a fellowship at Harvard University, and the mentoring that he's been doing with younger artists to pass the torch to right. a new generation. And so on this particular gig, um, I didn't know who he was touring with. I was just, I was going to see Herbie and I lost it for a moment. And Mike was looking at me like, you all right? Because one of his featured players in the band that evening was Terrace Martin. So for those of you who are hip hop fans, you know that Terrace Martin is one of the instrumental minds behind the production of the multi Grammy award winning Uh, album To Pimp a Butterfly by Kendrick Lamar. He, along with Kamasi Washington, another sax player, um, you know, are part of the brain trust that has created Kendrick Lamar as a phenomenon Mm. musically. You know, I mean, there are all kinds of people of all different ages and demographics who really enjoy his music, even though he's unapologetically black dude from Compton. And he (laughs) lets you know that in his rhymes. Right. And and Kamasi, his new album came out recently. Yes. He'll be coming to Union Transfer in November. Yes. So there's there's lots of young lions, as they say. Yes. But he was he was on the bill. He, it I'm may excited. as well have been his show, honestly. Well, I mean, he was very much featured. Mm-hmm. Um, but you, but I, I need people to understand the importance of a master like Herbie Hancock um, with his setup so that he could pivot on one little piano bench between his electronic instruments and that beautiful grand piano. Mm-hmm. And... Terrace on the other side of the stage with his alto sax and his keyboard set up and both of them on vocoder mm-hmm. kind of trading licks. And that was one of the unexpected bonuses for me of the show is that as much as I love Herbie straight ahead jazz, the fact that uh, because Terrace is deep in right. his vocoder bag mm-hmm. um, when he's not playing saxophone, the fact that Herbie did whole songs singing into the vocoder and playing. Right. Oh, it was so good, y'all. It no, was the, ener- so the energy good. that they, they manifested with <clears throat> with the selections, it was sort of a mix between, you know, the, the well-known songs and some new songs, I suppose, yes. that are on this new album and, and just building a vibe and... <clears throat> You know, the, the band, they played together for years, you know, mm-hmm. the drummer especially. And uh, it was just it was just super tight, and it looked like they were having a lot of fun. Yeah. And at the same time, y- you know, it, it was, you know, just very charming, and, and it went by really fast. I it mean, did. It, I was going to say, it was an hour and a half, and it, half. it flew yeah. for me. Yeah. I mean, you know, and... And just everybody, you know, just great a great jazz show. I mean, I wish there were more. I think you were talking earlier with the... Um, the visit Philadelphia. Mm-hmm. We need more places beyond the Kimmel, you know, that they, they, they can allow this yeah. type of improvisation. You know? Yeah. Because, uh, you know, I was talking to a famous jazz musician. He was saying, like, jazz, jazz is the jazz scene or, or the camaraderie, it doesn't exist anymore because nowadays it is sort of like this where it's it'll be like a bunch of all stars brought in to jam at one show or at one festival or something like that. But yeah. but uh, you know, we need more like Chris's jazz cafes, more you know, more places. Um, you know, you're talking about Zanzibar Blue, you know, where mm-hmm. where you can sort of manifest and and cultivate those the black lily hell right know, so you know just, just a- anything like that and so it was really you know like i say as much as i enjoyed the show and enjoyed being in that atmosphere i was kind of sad that it was juxtaposed against the uh, uh, uh philly music alliance walk of fame gala mm. because jill scott and labelle and sister sledge you know are all there having been honored earlier in the day with their bronze plaques along the avenue of the arts yeah. but the folks that gathered to pay tribute to them as a part of that concert was you know a who's who of philadelphia music scene and everything yeah. Yeah, else, and you just couldn't Instagram do both. Stuff. Yeah, 
Yeah. Well, I mean, the good the good thing. Well, it's sold out. The Ken Joe Scott's coming back on Monday mm-hmm. to be with Music Soul Child yep. to be a, a part of Kendra Presents, which you know Real Black has been filming or helping to film uh, the live streams for like the last two months. So. Even though there are no tickets available, we're encouraging people to check in on Kindred's Facebook page and watch the event and, uh, you know, chime in and interact because it's, yeah. it's really a homecoming part two. Yes. I mean, she got her walk, she got her, her plaque mm-hmm. on Wednesday and now she's coming back Monday to perform with music. And yeah. Kindred, it's going to be a very magical night. So. And, and, and that's not the only thing she's doing. I, I had yeah. a, a chance to kind of hang out with her and catch up. And I know that she's got a new film project in the works. And uh, and that's one of the things that uh, you want to talk about, Black Lightning. Yeah, yeah she got cast in, in this uh, Black Light- Lightning series for DC television. I think it's is it Netflix. I have to, I have to read up on it. Yeah, I was going to say, I can't remember who's distributing it. But yeah, more superheroes, and she's she's going to be the, a superhero in, yes. in the DC comic <laughs> universe. So shout out to Joe. Well, Joe I Scott. mean, you know, so for all of the folks who consider themselves to be sort of uh, uh, comic nerds, and, you know, admittedly, I'm not one. I'm, you know, I'm trying to sort of get my weight up with this. But there's going to be a lot of superhero fodder coming at us over the next several months for oh, people yeah. that are deep into it or trying to get into it. So for grandparents who are trying to be much cooler with your grandkids, you're going to have lots of t- ways to take them out to the theater and engage them with this culture and yeah. and you know just the whole world of the superhero yeah. for all of us who are Jason Momoa fans uh, besides the Aquaman feature film which isn't out until next year he's a part of the Justice League and that's going to be released in time for the holiday rush wow yeah and uh, you know so my- with what Wonder Woman uh, Aquaman uh, Green uh, is it Green Lantern the black guys okay. playing um the cyborg one. Okay, I can't remember what the what the well, official comic name. Yeah, I was gonna say I'm, I'm sh- just... share with us, especially those of you who are deep into your comic book bag, you know, because it's not my thing. Mike and I are encouraging you to school us on this whole process because <laughs> I, I don't remember. I just remember, you know, on the well, there's gonna be a just, lot of Wonder Women it's just uh, jobs. It's dressed just jobs. up. For, oh, Halloween for Halloween this year, yeah. for sure. Yeah, there are going to be a lot of Aquaman because men want to fancy themselves being as sexy as Jason Momoa. Well, I'm, I'm just excited about My Little Pony, the movie, which is out today. That's that's uh, why yeah. that's why I'll be tonight. <laughs> me. The nine o'clock. My Little Pony. And so I know Zoe Saldana is one of the voices. Is are there any other? black or brown folks involved I, don't, I just want part of my childhood back I'm just gonna sit there I'm did you gonna... actually watch My Little Pony when it was a regular TV series of course I did yes you, are one of you the did <laughs> uh no what you actually did that you're not oh, you're just hating on me huh? no you're I'm just making sure that you're telling the truth well maybe there's somebody out there that likes My Little Pony I'd be offended <laughs> if I told them the truth I'm just excited they're bringing all this 80s stuff back. Yeah, it is kind and, of fun to see the the 80s and, uh, resurgence. Comic book people and and stuff. I mean, not not that Hollywood is at a dearth of ideas and that's why they have to keep bringing the same things back but when it's My Little Pony or, or Black Lightning or whatever I'm, I'm down for whatever I was going to say it's a, a simpler time uh, allow us a bit I'm, of an escape from all the heaviness of the news cycle I'm good with it sometimes it's a stretch and when they brought the garbage pail kids back boo you know they did a documentary or some movie came out barely made any money earlier this year I think did, did really- the troll? how did the Trolls movie do I don't remember <laughs> Trolls. See, see, see! Look at Kayla, all excited. I, you know, there. I just wish I had thought of something back in 1984 that I could continue <laughs> to resuscitate. You know what? Stop hating I'm and just hating. let and just let the ideas live. No, it's intellectual property. I mean, it's like you know, like I, I feel bad, you know, that we had to sell our house when my grandmother got old. You know, because what that house would be worth now. So if if I just kept all my little scraps of paper from 1986. And I brought it back. Now I'd be I'd be a rich man. I wouldn't. I'd be able to. I'd be able to afford Volver <laughs> and not be fronting. I'd be like, give me two of them chickens. Instead of looking he's at going, him. He's gonna stay on it for a minute. I will say. I'm just saying. I am. I am. I am low. I'm wealth. low. Ma- I'm relatively low maintenance chick with high end taste. I admit this. I, I, I'm not saying. Look, you deserve everything. I, I'm di- just I saying, disclaimed this before we went. Understood, 
don't don't okay. don't be self conscious. I'm just saying, if I there's a difference between rich and wealth. Rich, True. rich is being at Volver. Oh, stop it! Wealth is having the copyright to My Little Pony and being able to trudge that little rainbow colored thing out every 20 Facebook years. Live I'm looking directly at you you don't have to be rich in order to have a relatively indulgent meal every now and again I didn't have a full plate I had so, I had a starter I had the tuna tartare and I'm it was wonderful saying, like if I if I had like maybe three days notice prior I would have been on Groupon looking for Volvo <laughs> And on it that, was delicious. It was delicious. And on fine. that note, we are taking our first commercial break. When we come back, we don't have guests this Ru- hour, Rupon so you are welcome. To, <laughs> you are welcome to call in or to tweet us and participate in this crazy conversation. 215-634-8065. Toll free at 1-866-361-0900. You can also mention either of, of us or both of us on Twitter. Mike, you can reach at Real Black, R E E S. B-L-A-C-K. For me, it's at W-U-R-D underscore S Renee. And we'll be back with more of this week's Real Black Radio in a moment. From the album Back on the Block, executive produced by Quincy Jones, that song included so many legends of the industry. Saida Garrett and Take Six, of course, feature prominently in the you know, setting the rhythm mm-hmm. and, and getting the song moving. But the late, great Al Jarreau, the late, great Ella Fitzgerald, the late, great Sarah Vaughn, uh, Bobby McFerrin, all kinds of folks uh, included in that particular production. And that's the kind of energy that I wanted radiating out over our airwaves. We're talking about honoring our legends. We're talking about um, being able to welcome them into our community in so many different ways. And so there is an important uh, uh, kind of message behind seeing where the industry is going, but also honoring those who help to get us where we are now that we are embracing on today's edition of Real Black Radio. And so in that vein, let's take our call before we start moving into Absolutely. new territory. Erica, reaching out from New Jersey. Good morning. Yes, good morning. I just wanted to say, first of all, I just moved back up north from Atlanta. I was born and raised in Jersey City, New Jersey. Ah. And I was looking for a African-centered, conscious radio station. I'm just so proud that I found Word Radio on mm-hmm. New Dial on AM and FM. Yes, That's welcome. And we're, we're very glad to have you back in the area and certainly checking us out. Have you downloaded the app? So you can make sure that even if you make your way back down to Atlanta for a visit, that you can take us with you? Yes, I will. I was actually listening via tune in this morning. Ah, but nice. now that I know you have an app, I'll download that too. That is a great thing. So, uh, so you know, what brought you back to the area, if that's not too intrusive? Um, love. Ah. I got back with my high school sweetheart, and we are making it work. Yes. yes. Well, we always, yo, know, shout, shout out for love and, and right. all of its yeah. many beautiful forms. And thank you for calling us and checking us out here today on Word Radio. And thank you for constantly telling us what's going on locally because that was important to me because I wanted to know what can I do because I was always involved in like black centered um, organizations. So listening to your station is helping me get to know what, what I can do, where I can go in Philly because one thing I just want to say is you will never hear McDonald's stop advertising about their meals. Hmm. You know, the, the day they stop advertising is the day people stop. You know, McDonald's is well, um, well branded, but they will still always advertise. And so that's right. something that yeah. we need to do about our with our businesses and with our organizations. We can't stop advertising. We can't think that people know our name or know we exist. We have to continually tell people about our, our businesses. Yes. So, um, thank you for existing. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you so much for that. And, you know, Mike, I was going to say, Mike, go ahead and put in a plug for everything you do with Real Black, because now that oh, Erica's well, back yeah, in, well, the Erica, Erica, yeah, definitely... in the area, we want her to come out. We'll talk about it next yes. week, but but next Friday, uh, the 13th, we're opening our season 15 opener of our screening series with... Uh, with a uh, sweet love bitter, which is Dick Gregory's only starring film role, yes. And uh, as a tree, as a pay what you wi- pay what you want. Mm-hmm. We're, we're changing our, our model this season, so you pay if you want to pay. Awesome. You want to give us fifty bucks? You want to give us three dollars? <laughs> I mean, you know, don't, don't, yeah. And you get free stuff with it too. Don't you know? But um, you know, so we're but the added treat is we have interviews with Dick Gregory and uh, Woody King and Don Murray, who, who all worked on the film, talking about their experience working on the film. We're going to share with with folks as well. Yeah, and. Um, and- Bon Jovi had a restaurant where you just paid what you wanted and it was super successful. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, 
Well, I mean, it's it's just, you know, it just doesn't make sense to place a value on it. I mean, we're we're at a point where so many movies, film is a commodity people really want on demand, you know, but we, we provide experiences. So we just want as many people to be able to experience it as possible and place whatever value you, you want on it, you know. So so I, I think, you know, we've been doing it 15 seasons. I think this is a good way to, to sort of celebrate and, and hopefully bring some numbers back. Yeah. You know, because we had a lot of great shows this season. But um you know, when you put a specific price point on things, people, I feel like people make a choice. Indeed. So, so we're glad you're tuning in, Erica, but we absolutely want to see your face and get a chance to meet Definitely. you. Yeah. So, uh, so I can just find more information on the website, on the app. On realblack.com, R E E L B L A C K. And then I haven't updated the newsletter, but James McBride, writer of Miracle St. Anna, he's mm-hmm. going to be at the Free Library free event on Wednesday. Yeah. And, um, you know, also if you're in New York, there's you talk about Black Love. There's a Black Intimacy series that the um, Museum of Modern Art is doing right now, and, nice. and they're gonna like tonight. They have, I'm not sure how this fits in. Straight out of Brooklyn. Uh, yeah, but and Matt, I forgot. Matt, I was gonna say, and I forgot the the, the, the guy from the Wire um, oh, was yeah, yeah. was star, was starring yeah. Larry, in that. Yeah, because I haven't Gilliard. seen it in a while. Larry Gilliard, but um, yeah, Maddie Rich. He's coming. He's gonna be at the Q and A. He's somebody who's a little. Hard to track down. I've only in 15 years. I've only run into him once. So he's going to do a Q and A for Straight Out Brooklyn tonight at MoMA Museum of Modern Art in New York. And then also, I think later in the week they're going to do uh, Lena Waithe, who just won yes. the uh, Emmy for for her um, her her Thanksgiving episode of Master of None. Yeah, she's going to do a Q and A around Watermelon Woman, which is Cheryl Denier's yep. feature film, which was recently restored. So there's there's a lot of good things in New York, and then you know just keeping it. In, in Philly centric, you know, the Philadelphia Film uh, Festival is coming yep. up. I'm sure we're going to have Andrew on next week mm-hmm. to share share information about that. But there's 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 a few, not as many as usual, but there's a few movies uh, this year that relate to black uh, experience. Most the one I'm most excited about is a documentary. Uh, it's live at the Apollo. All the Daptone record stars, uh, including Sharon Jones and, yeah. and the late Charles Bradley. Late Sharon Jones, late Charles Bradley. I know. So that's <sighs> part of the music um, series in, in the film festival. So that's at filmadelphia.org. You can see all that information. So a lot, a lot of good things happening. So thanks, thanks for tuning in. Filmadelphia. Yes. F I L M D E L P H I A. Yeah. Filmadelphia. Okay. Yeah, that's the Film Society's website. And they, you know, they have a lot of, they always have good things going on, so. Yes, indeed. Well, great to get a chance to be introduced to you, Erica, and we look forward to meeting you you out at a live event soon. All right. Thanks for putting me on the air. I appreciate it. So, Mm -hmm. I mean, the big, the big trending thing, do we have time for this? Yes. Okay. The big trending thing was Blackish. So we can't go, we can't go this episode without talking about the season four opener of Blackish. And uh, they, they just blew up Twitter. They basically did their version of Hamilton around a school play centered around Juneteenth. Uh huh. You know, so this is, I mean, this is like a gimme. If they're handing out Emmys, this one definitely deserves one, in my opinion. <laughs> uh, just for this song by The Roots. Yes, I'm only a slave. They'll place my body in an unmarked grave. In these Confederate days, it's kind of hard to lift every voice singing while worrying about how low the sweet chariots are swinging. I could swing from a tree, but hey, oh, I hope and pray they don't kill me today. I am still just a slave. slave and the home of the brave a product of the triangular trade please pardon my ways if i'm nervous or the slightest bit skittish in the presence of the portuguese spanish dutch or british they kept me in colonial chains tell me how to persuade them to chill or to save me if still i'm a slave Today, I am still just a slave. <laughs> so, for those of you who are outside of a particular demographic, the tune of that particular song comes from Schoolhouse Rock and their uh, song, I'm Just a Bill. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, the, the roots 
kind of uh, co-opted it and changed yeah. it into this song. And, and yeah. so where is this available? Well, that's that's actually the Spotify version, but there's there's a version floating floating around on Facebook, which is the full animation, if you can imagine. It's yes. animated. And there's like a little pro, uh, prologue that's added to it, what June, the whole meaning of Juneteenth and, and how you know, represents the, the date of freedom for for slaves. So yeah. despite the Emancipation Proclamation, this is a classic episode, just brilliant um, writing. Again, you know, we when Blackish first came on, we were a little skeptical, but I think it's come into its own. But this this was so, it was so funny when, when it started tr- trending, people were like, oh, I hope they don't cancel this. Like, <laughs> I was like, oh, they, did, they, did they really say that? That we're, wor- like, that we're they're, worried, they're, that we're now worried about offending someone with telling our truth, uh, you know, o- on television and having a vehicle to do so well i mean we've been stuck before look they've they've they're renewed they just the executive producer the the person who wrote this episode he just he just signed an exclusive deal to to abc studios yes. i think i think we're relatively safe however i do remember uh the day that our senior had farrakhan on yeah <laughs> yeah think, like the next day it's like okay that's it that's uh, but it, you know senior. i mean but the whole like, point Sand, it, sandman it, came out so. it, but see arsenio so you know it, different era but also arsenio was designed to be a black trending variety show hmm. blackish is all about taking black experience and a family that lives in an affluent neighborhood and still trying to maintain some cultural grounding so this premise fits very well into what they're supposed to be sharing on a weekly basis anyway. I guess. I'm, I'm just saying, Kenya, I, I appreciate what you do. Just be a little careful because you might get preempted. You know, that some <laughs> there might be, like right when you're about to come on, there might be a mass shooting or it, some uh, kind of craziness that's going to disrupt your flow. Please do not feed the conspiracy theorists. But I, I, I hear saying, you. I hear just, you. All right, if we're going conspiracy, it's kind of interesting what, 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 what was on the news the day before. I hear you. Las Vegas. It wasn't an Elvis movie about Las Vegas. No. It was some other stuff that just and, got swept and, off and the for those people who have not yet heard the reality of this, um, you know, now that they are continuing to dig into the Las Vegas shooting, mm-hmm. that this wasn't the only event where he's this looking, man was making go was making some show, he yeah. chance the rappers concert um in Chicago was uh threatened mm-hmm. and Lollapalooza was also on on the potential hit list. So the fact that it all, it, it, I mean, well, you don't want to well, say stars in alignment, well, but all the different factors that contributed to him being able to successfully carry out this mass shooting in Las Vegas, um, you know, he well, well, decided against it in some of these other places. Well, be, be clear, you know, I'm, I've, my heart goes out to everybody who was victimized and knows somebody who was victimized by it. Not, not just warmest condolences. Right. You know? oh, but, oh my I mean, God. Warm, very, warm very, condolences. Very, very, very serious thing. But I'm, I'm just saying like in our past, you know, we have, we have gone a little past. It's not our, it's not our network. ABC is doesn't stand for another bad creation, you know? So, so I'm just, I'm just he thankful. He really reached back. It's a nineties just... reference, ladies and gentlemen, if it's not of your era, don't worry about it. Where, the group where, has where, long been gone. And where are they today? Are Who, they listening? God only knows. Probably in jail. They were bad little boys. Oh my God! Really? Oh, we're going. Okay. <laughs> I, I don't wish jail on another bad creation. No, but, uh, but they, there they were, were some, bad little boys. There were some rappers that got caught up in that stuff. So, but anyway, um, yeah. So you know, I, I hope Emmys come to it, and I hope they're not preempted, you know, by <laughs> a special episode of Friends next week. You know, but that was a quite daring way to kick off season four. And, and if you haven't Ew. seen it, I, I think uh, <laughs> definitely encourage people to go check that out. So. Yes, indeed. Well, we are in the season of uh, season premieres. Mm-hmm. I fell asleep on Scandal last night. Um, but we'll come back and we'll talk about films. We'll talk mm-hmm. about TV shows. And the mayor. Yeah. Other things, yes, mm-hmm. uh, that are happening as we continue and as we conclude this week's edition of Real Black Radio here on our TGIF edition of The Mojo. Stay tuned. From the album, The Light of the Sun, that is Jilly from North Philly with the song that's called Bless. And I really, I listen, I felt for Jet on Wednesday afternoon. For those of you who don't uh, know, of course, Jill's son with another mm-hmm. Philadelphia musical talent and Lil John Roberts, uh, Jet Seven. Mm-hmm. And man, when people had the opportunity to surround Jill and swamp her to get their selfies and to tell her how much of an influence she was and everything else, you know, he's waist high. So it's like yeah. they just 
kind of imploded on her poor baby. And so, you know, I think Jill would have stayed out longer if he hadn't been with her. But it, it was a lot. Yeah, and, it was a Jill, lot. Jill is always ultra gracious too. Yes, like she she'll shake she does everybody's her best. hand and she'll stay there forever. So yeah. So I know I know it's gotta it's gotta be a little tougher to be in public in Philly. Yes, in particular. A shout yeah. out to Mama Joyce who was in town also to be there to see her baby girl. Because you know she's thusly honored. She's she's diva, but she's genuinely warm in spirit. Listen, like she's one of the warmest. Jill Scott people. is a, uh, an Aries. So for any of you who understand the totality of what that means, that is first on the astrological wheel. And, you know, she suffers, uh, does not suffer fools very <laughs> lightly. Right. So it is important for people to understand you got you need to come like you got some sense. Do not come with arms outstretched or hand out. Everybody mm-hmm. don't want to touch you. Yeah, it's, it, it's just, you know, people have, need to take that into consideration. Don't know your energy. Don't know who who you mm. just act, please act like you got some sense around these celebrities folks were damn near elbowing folks out of the way to get to miss patty to get that you know that and listen miss patty is another one that does not suffer fools lightly you got to know <laughs> when you come up on these you know super duper stars in our community that you need to show some respect and give them some safe personal space in order to motivate and then they'll be very, you know, be very accommodating. But you just can't come at them like. Yeah. Well, I mean, you, you, them. you have to remember any anybody, the human beings. So I know you want your selfie, but, you know, just the, the protocol is just be be a human being first. And, yes. and you'll get you'll get further than just jumping in people. Hey, stand here and smile for me, you know, kind exactly. of stuff. So you just the, everybody's a human being and, and you give you get back what you what you put into it. So the mayor premiered after Blackish. It's uh-huh. a new show. Um, kind of, you know, it's sort of like a Trumpish meets, you know, living large. <laughs> it, it reminded, I was like, oh, wow, oh, this, you went this back is, there. This is a living TV. large. This, Most this, people don't even remember. So, if from that era, we had Strictly Business. I'm trying to think of other black films that were like in that space. Living large, though. Well, that's, like, that's, how, that's how far my lexicon, <laughs> my lexicon goes. But the yes. thing. I mean, I said this is live and large, but it's 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 a cute show. I mean, I'm not sure how long it's going to stay on. It got, did really well in the ratings, even though it's up against This Is Us. You yeah, know, I was going to say juggernaut. I watched This Is Us, so I didn't see they, Blackish or uh, the Mayor. They said it did really well, but it basically, it's about a young kid, 27 year old would be rapper in Oakland who runs for mayor as a publicity stunt and surprisingly wins. Mm-hmm. And now he's being forced to deal with some of the social problems. So on on the plus side, I mean, it's definitely lifted like right out of Trumpville. Right, you know? right. Right. But and it's also like Living Large was basically about a guy who wants to be on the news and then he witnesses a, a killing and he becomes like a news superstar. You know, so sort of like one of those fish out of water. Like Antoine Dobson. Kind of things. Well, no, he's not. Hide your kids, either. hide your wife. OK. I'm sorry. Well, we're assuming these characters have brains. but. <laughs> You know what? But you see, I wasn't insulting the man. I'm just saying that he was lifted out to be a new superstar. Charles Ramsey, when they found the girls that had been, you know, chained up in the basement in so, Cleveland. So life for imitates years. art. So shout I'm, out to shout out to Michael Schultz and and Barry Barry for for making Living Large. So okay. we could <laughs> thirty years later have Antoine Dodson. Um, I was gonna say Michael Schultz. We will forever lift you up for Cooley High. Some of the other things, you know, yeah, they're, they're, they're a little that, more that questionable. Might, that might be a slight blemish on. <laughs> <laughs> on the career of Michael Schultz at Living Large. But, but you know, it's it's ours. We It's ours. It's part of our culture. But, yes. you know, so the mayor, it was, it, 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 I, I just don't know if I'm going to tune in every week for it because it's so preachy. It just seems uh-uh. so fundamentally, like, message-oriented. And the message is basically young people have the power mm-hmm. to ch- change things. And, you know, it's one of the, one of the people that's involved. It's very, one of the producers was involved in Hamilton. Uh. So it's very, very much has an agenda going. And, and, um, I'm not, I'm just not, I'm, I wasn't quite feeling it 100%. For those I, of you who do not watch This Is Us, I, it, it is my sentimental favorite. And I will just say that now it's, it's, there's a lot going on but in particular um, if you follow the black characters on This Is Us uh, Sterling 
Brown, uh, you know, plays one of the triplets and that's explained in the show. You have to watch it. Uh, but he and his wife are considering adopting and that's a big deal. Mm-hmm. So just as a storyline with the black characters on that show, it is very meaningful and their relationship as husband and wife is just so rich and multidimensional and we don't get it very often on TV. For the same people that miss Barack and Michelle in the White House, if you watch This Is Us, you get it with their with with their marriage and their relationship. And they have two little girls like mm-hmm. Barack and Michelle. Shout out uh, belated 25th anniversary to the Obamas. Yeah, well, um, but, well, you know, but but that's why so that that's why I watch it. That. Well, you know, I'm, I love them. I'm looking at the reviews. I mean, people are giving the mayor a 10. I, I say give it a give it a chance. But I, I, I think, you know, it's. it's one of the things I, one of the problems I have with network TV is stuff like the mayor. It's just so middle of the road, milk toast, and and it's very. It just feels almost like a pandering, like a wanna be rapper. You know, why can't this guy want to be a politician? You know, mm-hmm. so, or or something, and then suddenly he wins. You know, there's some there's always got to be like a little hook to it. Yeah. You know, so I mean, it incorporates rap music, and so I'm just. I'm on the fence about it. I'm going to give it a... I like the message. I, I feel like it's entertaining, but I feel like it's trying a little too hard. I might try I might try and, and you know, call it up on demand over the weekend and, and just see it for the sake of seeing, I, yeah, you know. Yeah, you know, it's it's very interesting time that we're in. I don't think black shows are going to go away, but I think certain amounts of money that are being spent right now... Mm-hmm or sort of a reaction to some of the other things that are, that are going on well, in the culture? I will say that depending on how long this Harvey Weinstein drama drags out, yeah. we know that you know the Weinstein brothers have been responsible for the distribution of a lot of black films. Right. Uh, and so it'll be interesting to see if his personal drama impacts the business. Yeah, well, for those who don't know, I mean, he's, you know, if you look at Harvey Weinstein, it's obvious he's been sexually harassing. I mean, it's, it, was, it wasn't big news. No. The York Times the way they broke he's he's a very powerful man in the industry and and he's been using this power for decades to to manipulate women or or sexually harass them and mm-hmm. and so uh, and he's not denying that he's saying that some of the facts as they were stated in the New York Times uh, kind of expose article are overblown that he has settled some of these cases out of court and so he's planning on suing them for defamation but not because they lied about it per se that they've really kind of blown up it's, some of the details it's an, it's an interesting take well, a lot of the information that they're reporting was supposedly confidential and, and leads to conjecture look you know it's not it's not a secret that that you know when you have a lot of powerful people and especially powerful men in a sexist society that, yeah. that people are going to use their power to 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 try and take advantage of people and and there're going to be some people that that go for that and you know because they feel that either they have no choice which is completely wrong or that that these people can in fact ad- help advance their career and yeah. and that's been game since forever before Hollywood I'm sure but but um you know, it's 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 a changing time. I mean, on one hand, when I looked at the headline, I said, "Well, maybe this is like the last gasp of you know old white guys." You know? <laughs> like may, maybe maybe this this whole Roger Ailes thing and all this is like come up and so maybe it's just an extension of gossip. I, you know, I don't know, but I I feel like there is you know some change. But again, you know, power corrupts. Absolute power corrupts absolutely, mm-hmm. and. Um, you know, there are no secrets anymore. You know, you can't pay these people off because everybody's subject to the court of public opinion. So yeah, what, yeah, absolutely. You, you and there, and there are cameras about. everywhere. There's documentation everywhere. If you're having these conversations, if you have engaged in these behaviors, there somebody saw something, somebody heard something. You know, it, and I mean, people maintain the secrecy for so long. So then, you yeah. know, it sort of it reminds me of the little Chris Rock bit on the Chris Rock show where they had this guy, this gangster was you know, informant for the feds for years. And then like on his deathbed, they decide to arrest him. Like, yeah. He's been getting away with murder for years. Right. Right. So, you know, how how they fire Roger Ailes and how long did he live after that? Not long at all. It's like He must have gotten his diagnosis the same day he got his termination. <laughs> Seriously. Papers. It was I mean, it was, it was quick. You know, so I mean, if, if you're going to punish these people, you at least do it early, like nip it in the bud. I mean, like make it clear from an early age that this, yeah. this should not be tolerated. And if you're a woman at work or if you're if you're a man at work, you know, and, and people are harassing you, you this should not. 
this should not affect your pay rate or your ability to continue to work within the industry that you love. So, yeah. So, you know, so if you know, but it's it's again, you know, like next week we'll be talking about something else. Well, I mean, it, it's just important to, to note that there may be and there's no guarantee, but there may be some financial fallout from these allegations and how all this is going to proceed that the Weinstein company has been very open and welcoming right. to the distribution of black stories on the big screen. And so, you know, everything has consequences and repercussions and yeah. we just need to be you know, well, look, aware you know, of that. Look, he had his day, you know, if it's, if it's, if it's his time to go then let him go, you know, like I, I don't I'm think not advocating. I don't, I don't think Weinstein, whatever is going to be in any kind of trouble and, and if he if he loses the team if he's got to sell his team because of some behavior he'll still be okay he'll still have his house and all that other stuff mm-hmm. give, give some opportunity to some other people I'm really excited Charles King got a very beautiful write up in the New York Times and, and hopefully we can get him on to talk about macro they've been doing some amazing things the last three years they, they help finance fences they have the new Denzel movie that the, the trailer just dropped and, and they're helping to finance this Michael B. George uh, comic book movie on Netflix. I mean, so this is this is a guy who was a former William Morris agent, and after 15 years, he he left the business to start his own company, and mm-hmm. he's been financing black stories. and And it's an excellent article because it really talks about how you know film has been around for over 120 years, but you know who gets to tell the story? Who's whose job is it? And yeah. their their whole mission is to try and bring some more quote unquote diversity into the picture. And they've they've been they just got $150 million worth of additional funding and, and they have deals with all kinds of people from Ryan Coogler, as I mentioned, to mm-hmm. Ava DuVernay, to Van Jones. Yep. So so I, I think the tide is turning and, and if, if these old white guys got to die off like dinosaurs so that we can get a little more of a reflection of of what the world looks like, what what humanity looks like, what our cultures look like, you know, reflected within our media, within our entertainment, then you know, whatever. I mean, we still got Goodwill hunting, whatever. You know, whatever. Go stop it. But I just, you know, I, I just think that there is a um, I'm not worried th- about him. There's no, no, I, I'm not either. Okay. But I think the door is open, and for all the people that, for whatever reason, have hesitated from uh, trying to pour some resources into making sure that good stories get told about what's happening in our community. This is a, a, a this is a ripe time to look at all the new distribution channels, to look at all the new ways that you can bring the art directly to people and affect affect lives uh, in a positive way and so you know uh, yeah, we just encourage people to do that yeah we're finally getting our 31 flavors we, mm-hmm. we can get the 40 acres where we're getting we're getting a little more flavor <laughs> in our entertainment and that's, that's a good thing so and last thing i'll mention um are you excited about this idris elba movie that came out today no I thought you liked it. You wanted to see Idris in a cabin. There are other Idris films I have not. I think Idris is fine. Am I going to run to see Idris trapped in the mountains? No. But there's a romance. They're they're stuck up in there. Again. They're in a cabin together. I like looking at Idris. Somebody sent me a link to an article the other day that had 26 gifts of Idris being Idris. I'll look at that before I run out to the theaters and go see this film. I don't know. I mean, but it's Kate Winslet from Titanic. And? And Idris, you no. Know, once once you go black, no. I mean, there won't be any more. <laughs> there won't be any more Kate Winslet, Leonardo DiCaprio movies now that she's. I think it's hilarious that he gets to have his British accent and she doesn't have, get to have hers uh, within this character. I'm, but just, I'm I, just, I just saying, no, that's, a la- that's a last. That's survival a last. films and black folks. No. If you listen, if you if you no. if you trust, if you look at the three Ds, this will be the last Kate Winslet romance. <laughs> she she will never be in another movie with a white man. If you want to trust the three Ds, mark my words. Well, those of you who are super duper Idris fans who Kate, want to see him Kate, in all manner of dress or Kate undress Winslet. and in whoever he happens to be romantically attached to, y'all go for it with The Mountain Between Us. That is not a Stephanie style she'll, film. She'll be opposite Jamie Foxx in her next movie. 
And, and then on that and note, then she'll be we on are Dancing with the Stars. Because my next guest is on the line and we're going to talk about more positive depictions of folks right. Just on we love film. You, Kate. Yeah, indeed. We love so uh, that will conclude <laughs> this week's edition of Real Black Radio. We're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, we are going to talk about a documentary film that you will get a chance to see at Lightbox Theater that talks about Liberians in Philadelphia and how they overcome cultural differences as well as strife in the community by coming together in song. That and plenty more when we continue with this TGIF edition of The Mojo in just a moment. 